Hey, what's up? My name's Alexa, and today I started rereading The Bell Jar for the third time. Now you might be wondering, Alexa, why would you read The Bell Jar three times? So I first read The Bell Jar when I was around 13, and I really liked it at the time. I just really liked the storytelling. I loved her writing, and the way she used language, and the way she depicted mental illness and depression. And so I decided to pick this up around a year ago to reread it years later. Um, I was 20 a year ago. So I completely had forgotten what this was about. I wanted to, you know, go back into it, see what I liked so much about it. So at that point, I pretty much forgot what the book was about. Rereading it for the second time was just like reading it for the first time all over again. <laughs> all my memories were gone. So I really liked it the second time around. I gave it five stars both times. And while I do think this book is problematic and Sylvia Plath is problematic in her own way, I do really enjoy this book as like a piece of fiction. I also do think with this book in particular, Sylvia Plath has like, you know, a unique perspective and voice when it comes to the topics that are talked about in this book, mostly because she experienced a lot of what this main character experienced with her mental health and being in the 50s. So I decided to reread this again because in the summer, my friend gave me this book for my birthday called La Belle Ajar. It basically is a poetry book that has 20 poems, each based off of every chapter in The Bell Jar. And each poem is a cento poem, which is kind of like a collage poem where you take sentences and words from a text that you're referencing and make it into a whole new poem. So it's really cool. I started reading it this morning and I read chapters one through four and so I've read the first four poems and it has just been such a fun experience reading the chapters and like paying such close attention to like what's going on and the language and the sentences and then seeing it appear in the poem and see how this author like combined it all. It's really cool to see how this author writes the poems because I definitely feel like it's not just like a, a summary of the chapter, it's more of like how this author is interpreting what's going on. And so far I really agree with like how they're interpreting these chapters and what's happening and it's just so cool and so unique. Especially because I feel like me and this author are on the same page for sure. I basically the second time I read this, I started tabbing it and I mentioned this in the video I made last year because I made a reading vlog while I was reading this at the time and I started tabbing it because I started suspecting an inkling of queer theory, okay? And so I went to this book knowing that I was gonna see that again. Like I was definitely going to be more aware of that this time around for sure. And I started tabbing this with blue tabs this time for moments that I could just argue about. Moments where I could just, you know, pop in, see what I tabbed and have a discussion because I think this book has more to it than meets the eye. Now, why I think me and this author are on the same page is because some of the poems have referenced very specific moments I tabbed in the book. And I just found that to be really interesting. I feel like this person is seeing what I'm seeing. And so I thought I would read one little excerpt of a poem. So this small section of the second poem for the second chapter really stood out to me. I just loved how it was constructed and I just thought it was very telling. So I'll read that one. It goes, my drink was wet, another sip of an express caboose kiss, whirling around her teeth, stooped, swinging melons, leaning, then sucking up Doreen's breasts under my breath glittering so perfectly crawling dirty in love till the holy baptism bathtub pink marble jazz waters pool of concrete dissolving liquor kisses hot pure tap tap dizzily blinked out mustache woman listening to heat hearing her spiked heels moan 
Sunless resembled my face a pile of pillows. She leaned even heavier, lipstick, quietly loyal at heart. So yeah, I just thought that was stunning. So I wanted to bring y'all along as I reread The Bell Jar one year later, my thoughts, my opinions, and also share some of the really cool poetry I'm reading for the first time in this book. Anyway, I will catch y'all up later once I read some more and let you know what I think. Hello, it is some time later. It's a bit noisy outside as always, so don't mind that. So I have continued to read The Bell Jar as well as La Bella Jar. And I am on chapter 13. So I've read one through 12 and I've read 12 poems. So we're at the point in The Bell Jar where she just got her first like electric shock therapy and she's not in the actual like hospital yet but she visited it to get this therapy therapy i will say i do think this drags a lot towards the middle i always have thought that i think it drags at certain points um pretty often i feel like this happens a lot during the bell jar because it's less of a plot driven story and i feel like more um commemorated for its use of language so it's kind of dragging right now because it's like right in between when she comes back from new york and then she goes into like the hospital because as we know when she gets back from new york she doesn't get into the program that she was pretty certain she was gonna get into for the summer so she's just like left with nothing to do so i've actually been reading this a lot slower than I anticipated. I feel like this book is easy to get through usually, um, but something about right now, <laughs> I'm just like not in the mood for such a slow paced book. So I feel like this is kind of taking me a little longer than usual to get through, um, which also just might have something to do with me feeling like it's dragging a bit, but. I have also been reading the poems and the poems have been nothing but great. I will say the only thing that I'm sort of confused about is I realized that the author is taking words, little sentences, phrases from each chapter and like making them into their own. But part of me wonders if they're like completely their own thing or if they're a little inspired by the actual chapter because i mean i feel like it obviously is a little bit of both but at points i'm like reading the poems and some of them i'm like okay i totally get this totally on board with what's going on and then others i'm like i don't really know what you're going for here so i don't know it's like i feel kind of iffy about it but i thought i would share maybe a line or two that i read today that i really liked okay so i'll read these two this one is from poem number 10 which is inspired by chapter 10 titled what a hopscotch the world was so this section of it goes i filtered sulfurous light into the exhaustion of clothes the soprano squeaked kissing my naked stomach i tilted an unsociable gaze my zombie ass never living chews the sweat of a mattress impression tombstone like i squinted untranslatable voices my brain embarrassing dead keen with an intuitive glittering touch i like that one a lot I also like this one. This was from the last chapter, chapter 12, which basically in this chapter, she's really heavily thinking about committing suicide. And she's just like, basically like thinking about it and like thinking up half-baked plans. And so this kind of has like, I would say slightly triggering language, just FYI. It goes, I said goodbye. I could feel red tears like a guillotine, my shadow paralyzed, circling my ash-colored head. I looked empty and subdued among the gillet blades, paper scraps, it occurred to me, I must be idly dead. I really liked this one, like, this obviously isn't the whole poem, it's just a little part of it, but sometimes I feel like the poems in this book make more sense than other 
other times. I feel like some of the poems, they put together the words perfectly and while it creates something else entirely, it also really accurately resembles what's happening in the chapter. But other times I do feel like the words are just kind of, I don't want to say thrown together because obviously there's still thought being put into it. It just feels less like meaningful, I guess. Anyway, that is my update for now. Hopefully I will finish this soon. Hello, it is many days later and I have finally finished <laughs> the Bell Jar and La Bella Jar. Even though this kind of put me in like a little bit of a mini slump, just because it took me so long to read, like this took me like damn near a week and a half. I don't even know the exact dates, but last time I read this, I read it in two days. So I was expecting that kind of pace, but that's not what had happened. I'm still glad I did read this because I wanted to read this and that was my main motivation. I just kind of thought it was fun to read it exactly a year later too once i realized that it was around a year also these are my bunny socks say hello I'm trying to wave with my foot okay i'm gonna stop that so my overall thoughts i feel like i actually had a little bit of a change of opinion this time around see last time i gave it five stars because i was like okay like this isn't like my favorite book in the whole world like this isn't the best book ever written but I really value what it's giving me but this time around because it was such a slow reading process I was like I don't know I don't know so I did end up giving this four stars I changed my rating to four stars which I feel like isn't really that big of a deal anyway, but it was interesting reading it for a third time because I feel like even though it's, you know, my third time reading this, there were still moments where I was reading it and I like kind of knew what scene was happening or like coming up, but then it was actually happening and I was like, oh, I kind of forget this, like what's going on? And I had like sort of, you know, a sense memory of like what was happening, but it wasn't fully, you know, cemented in my brain and it's kind of fun. It's like watching a movie after not seeing it for a while, except I feel like with books and with this book especially, it's just way more intimate. And I think that's like what everyone likes about this book you know it's just like a very like intimate portrayal of like what it looks like when you feel like your life is just like spiraling anyway on the other hand i also finished the bella jar obviously and this i ended up giving 3.5 stars i rounded up to four i was just in between three and four so i was like Okay, what really had me in the space in between was the fact that I didn't feel 100% on every poem. Like, some of them were, like, a bit confusing, and then some of them, like, totally hit. So, I do think I'll read maybe one or two more little highlighted parts that I really liked, you know, just for fun and in case you're, like thinking about picking this up if you like the bell jar and like kind of want to see what something like this would be like so this one's from chapter 16 how did you get here i could hardly explain to my sorrowful mother why it occurred to me to kill myself begging me to chat my telephone buzzer sounded hurt my life utterly confounded satisfied with tasting luxurious death i brace my tongue to disappear some of them are like very almost i want to say accessible in the way that like anyone could read that and like kind of know what they mean you know but i feel like there's some poems in here where it's like if you're not used to reading poetry it could be a little confusing i like this one a lot too this one goes um, which one is it from? This is from 14. I felt darkness, but nothing else. Scattered naughtiness, my fingers began to crack. A million little shards, I couldn't imagine the mirror. My skin trembled in the corner, grating. 
I always saw I tried to kill my ugly body, starving, solemn. I tightened my mouth, stiff feeling, huddled inside myself, my tongue stuck. I smiled, a shapeless secret. I pretended I wanted to be nobody. That one was so good. <laughs> I really liked that one. Anyway, I did enjoy my experience reading this and I feel like it definitely heightened the experience of rereading this for the third time. But that is gonna be all for this video. Thanks so much for watching. If you've read The Bell Jar and if you've read this especially, please let me know your thoughts or just your thoughts on the poems that I shared. This is definitely something that's gonna stay in my mind and I would love to discuss with others, so. That is all for today. Thanks so much, y'all, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.